Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today. This is another video on network radios. So for those of you who watch this channel know that I've reviewed quite a few network radios um, over the past sort of 12 months. The Radio Tone RT3, RT4, the Quingo 7S, the Sennheim mobile network radio, the Enrico TM7, quite a few. And I've been on a mission to find the ideal budget network radio. So for those of you who don't know what network radio is, it's basically a smartphone, usually that operates on Android, that has a PTT and the, it is in the style of a radio. And some of them are quite quite a novelty and, and they do have a place in amateur radio. I don't care what anybody says, they do have a place in the amateur radio hobby. It isn't amateur radio, we know that, I've said this in other videos, but it has a place in the amateur radio community in the fact that there was uh, there's like hundreds of amateur radio operators that have got um, live call signs on the Zello at network radio groups, which sort of speaks volumes. So it's a great little sideline to amateur radio. And basically, as I say, I've been trying to find the ideal budget network radio, and I've reviewed quite a few over the past sort of 12 months. The Radio Tone RT3, the Radio Tone RT4, we've got the Quingo 7S here, uh, the Sennheim Network Mobile Radio, and the Enrico TM7. And they're all pretty good devices, but they do carry a price tag, and some people don't want to or can't spend the higher price tag on some of these devices. Now, there's nothing that these network radios do that your standard smartphone does or can do. So the iPhone 7 here with a rabbit phone case, do you like that? Um, there's nothing that they can do that this can't do. But it's nice to have a separate device um, that you can put a cheap SIM card in or just use Wi-Fi and operate on the, uh, the Zello networks. So I've got a selection in front of me here. This was the first one I tried, which I did a video. This is a disaster. The uh, MAFAM, I think it's the M30 or something like that. Uh, this is an awful device. It, it, when I bought it, it claimed to be Android. It wasn't Android. It's got its own sort of custom little operating system in, very similar to the cheap sort of £10 mobile phones you can get at the supermarkets, you know, for like the elderly that have got giant buttons on. So it looks looks all right, looks nice and shiny, but it is useless. It's it's awful, absolutely awful. Look at that battery pack in the back. Um, yeah, so this this actually has a UHF radio in. Um, the UHF radio performs okay for about a hundred yards, and then after that, it's just horrendous. Um, but yeah, that was that was a mistake. That was about thirty pounds. Um, that's been in the drawer ever since I did the last uh, video on it. I'll put that video in the description. Um, and then there was the Radio Tone RT3, which is one of the early ones that came out. It's based around the Shaw F22 and F22 um, series of network radios. And this is the, the basic one. This has just got, um, it doesn't have a UHF radio built in, but this is a nice little device. Um, it works really, really well. I use mine every day in the car. And yeah, I, I can't fault it. Great little device. And these have come down in price now. When this come out, it's about 170 quid, but you can pick these up a lot cheaper now. Um, so that's that one. Uh, Radio Tone RC4, which is basically a more rugged version of the RC3. Uh, it has a slightly bigger screen and a rugged DMR radio style case, um, very, very similar to the Motorola style radios. And this is a an absolutely cracking little radio, still quite a high price point on this, I think around £200, £180, £190, £200 depending on where you buy from, um, but these are these are a really good device and I use this from home and when I'm round and about and yeah I can't can't really fault it, it's nice, nice to have the bigger screen. Uh, the Quingo 7S Plus, this is a really nice network radio, this is sort of has all the styling of the Radio Tone RT3 and, and more. Um, I'm really happy with this. The retail price on this is, I think, over 100, over 150 pounds. It's a bit more of a, an expensive one, but it does work well. Um, I, I, like I said, I've been using this for a bit. Can't really fault it. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's another another one in the collection there. So that's just sort of an overview of network radios. And the whole point of this video is they do carry quite a hefty price point if you want. A device just to use for one thing if you're not going to use it as your everyday phone and it's just for zello then the argument would be why not just use your smartphone so what i've got here is another network radio now i don't know much about this yet because i've not had a chance to properly properly use it but we're going to have a look inside this 
and um, see if it's worth the money. These retail at about 59, 60 pounds, so a lot cheaper than these. They claim to be Android. They also claim to have a UHF radio built in, which we're gonna have a look at. I'm a bit skeptical about that, but we've got the device in its little box here. And as you can see, it looks the part. So, what we're going to do guys, is we're going to have a look inside the box on this thing, we're going to go over some of the basic features, and uh, then we'll have a look inside and see if it's all it's cracked up to be, and see if it's actually worth the £60 price point compared to some of the more expensive devices. So, I can't actually give you a name for this device, it just comes under description when it's sold on places like eBay, Amazon, and some other online stores, and it's basically advertised as an IP68 rated, which I strongly doubt, um, rugged PTT two-way, two-way walkie-talkie, just bear that in mind because I've just had a look at this. Um, well, I'll just say now it does not have a two-way radio built into it. I should really just stress that from the start. So if you're buying this thinking it's got a UHF or VHF radio in it, it hasn't. Um, so yeah, it's described as a two-way radio, um, PTT, FM radio, flashlight, power bank, all sorts of stuff. Um, but we'll come to, we'll come to uh, the detail of it in a minute. But it doesn't have a UHF or VHF radio built inside. I should stress that from the start, even though it would lead you to believe it does. But we'll come to that in a minute. So just some of the features on this uh, this device, uh, well, the features it claims to have. It claims in a lot of the online stores to have a 3,800 milliamp hour battery. It doesn't, the battery on the back says 2,800 milliamp hours. Um, so already a little bit of um, lying going on there. Um, it's got a capacitive touchscreen, 2.4 inches. It supports commercial PTT apps um, with its built-in PTT. It operates on Android, so it has the Google Play Store, so you can download Zello with this thing. It does support 3G and GSM across all bands and it's unlocked to most networks and certainly all UK networks. It's dual SIM, so it takes two SIM cards, it has an SD card slot, it claims to be IP67 rate, IP68 rated. Um, by the looks of it, I would pass it as probably IP67, it's got rubber gaskets all around the, um, the slots and openings on it, but I wouldn't want to test that really for a device that's so cheap. It has the obligatory flashlight, which comes on a lot of devices from China, quite a bright flashlight on the top, and it comes in orange, blue, sort of like a blue, grey and black, and I've chose the black model. So it definitely does look the part. We'll come to the handset in a second. We're just going to have a look inside the box. So here we've got a little bag. What's inside this bag? Right, so we've got, looks like a little tool um, to screw the battery compartment on the back. We've got the belt clip there and we've got a little antenna. It's like a little 4G antenna. Oh, there we go which opens up into a telescopic antenna. Now, this would be for a UHF radio, but there isn't a UHF radio in this device, as I said, so um, you know, a little bit misleading there, but we've got the antenna. We've got a bag here with the um, earpiece and PTT um, speaker mic there with a the micro USB power connector. Looks, looks reasonable quality, quite a thick cord on it. Looks, looks okay. We've got a USB power cable there, which is USB to micro USB for charging. And then we've got a two pin little power adapter there for plugging this into the uh, into the wall. And if you're in the UK, you'd need a, a two, uh, two pin to three pin converter, but it is USB, so any USB charger would power this or a power bank. Okay, so that just leaves us with the, uh, the battery, the back cover and the device itself. So we'll bring the camera in and we'll um, get that assembled and we'll have a proper look at this thing. Okay, so we've got the basic components here to put this thing together. As you can see, it's quite nicely styled. Um, it does look the part. We've got on the front the little screen, a uh, 2.4 screen there, the touch screen. We've got a full keypad and navigational buttons. Um, these are like a, a plastic, they're not rubberized, they're, they're plastic, but they feel pretty solid. They're not like flimsy or anything. We've got the rubber cap on the side here, which um, hides the USB connector for charging and for the earpiece headset. Just behind a rubber seal there. We've got the flashlight button there, which turns this flashlight on the top on. And on the top, we've got the antenna socket there behind a the rubber cap. I don't know why they put these rubber caps on. It's, um, well, I suppose it's if you want to just use this as a phone without the UHF radio, but it doesn't have the UHF radio, which is a bit silly. Um, on this side, we've got the PTT and then just some rubberized grips here to help uh, keep hold of it. 
On the back we've got a speaker and we've got the camera and then on the inside of the device here we've got slots for the two SIM cards and for the memory card and it just gives you some information, some IMEI numbers and that in there. And then behind these little rubber um, caps are screws to take this thing apart. Um, just on the IP68 rating, it's, it's definitely not IP68 rated, it's a possible IP67 rating. Um, it's got rubber seals like around the antenna inside there and on these caps. Um, it's got the rubber seal over the USB port and the rubber seal inside and it's got rubber seals on the back there on the battery compartment but I wouldn't want to test that really for a device of this price, you know like 59, 60 quid. I wouldn't want to test the IP67 rating on it because it might not work. So assembly is dead simple, you would just put a SIM card or an SD card, well a SIM card and or an SD card in the back there but we're not going to bother with that today because we're just going to connect this to Wi-Fi. Battery goes in like so, as you can see on the back there is a 2800mAh battery, not the 3800mAh battery that was advertised and um, it puts out 37 volts, pretty, uh, pretty standard and that just clips into place and then the battery compartment just clips on the back like so and just presses into place. Now the belt clip I'm not going to bother with for now but that would sit on there and then those screws would go in over that but we're not going to put that in for now. You get this little tool for screwing these screws into place. which as you can see takes absolutely ages but it's in place now feels pretty solid as well and if we just take off the uh, cap we can screw our little 3G, 4G um, antenna into place there and like I say just look at that antenna it does open out for the uh, Phantom VHF or UHF radio Okay, so that's the device assembled, dead simple. It does feel pretty chunky and pretty solid in the hand. It doesn't feel any different to sort of the Radio Tone RT3. In fact, this is slightly heavier than the Radio Tone RT3 um, that I've got here. And as you can see, if we compare them side by side, it's pretty uh, pretty similar in terms of, uh, of quality. In fact, I probably, I would even say I prefer the styling on this, uh, to be honest, but we'll see if this is all it's cracked up to be. Something can look good. Um, but be rubbish and then of course let's just cast our minds back to this which was a classic example the uh, MAFAM you know it looks nice and shiny I mean it looks really cheap and tacky but it looks pretty solid and chunky but it's awful so back to this device anyway so to switch this thing on we just press the power button there and it says welcome make you happy so we've already got a spelling mistake on the uh, start up screen there but this is just loading up now make you happy this is what I mean about things getting lost in translation so it just takes a minute to load up okay and then we're on and we've got the correct time and date there's no sim card in this device at the moment no sd card so we're just running off uh, wi-fi now just before i started filming this uh, this section of the video i did go in and turn this on and, and connect to the wi-fi just to save a little bit of time but as you can oh, just open the lock screen there as you can see it does look all right so to open the lock screen now this is where my heart sank a little bit because it doesn't look like android at all um really but it is, it is full Android, it's an old version of Android, we'll have a look at what version it is in a minute but it does work. So you can see we can navigate through the uh, the, the main screen here and we've got apps installed um, and if you just go back to the first screen, that's blank. On the home screen we've got the date and time, we've got the browser, gallery, music, phone messaging and contacts and if we just scroll through you can see we've got video player, settings, backup, email, calculator, clock, calendar, camera, downloads. Uh, on this side we've got Facebook, we've got the Google Play Store which does work, we've got Sim Tools, WhatsApp and of course you can see I've already installed Zello there uh, ready to show you. So yeah, like the basic answer to the question, is it proper Android? Yeah, it is. It is, it is a version of Android that will work. 
Okay, so if we have a look in the settings, you can see we've got some more familiar menus now. It's starting to look a bit more like Android. We've got um, SIM management settings there, which is actually blanked out because we haven't got a SIM card in. We've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, data usage. If we click on more, it goes into VPN and uh, tethering options as well as USB internet, things like that. We've got audio profiles, the display, so you can change the brightness. And you can see, for those of you who are used to Android, we've got the Android operating system in here, um, you know, 100%. And we've just got some other, other uh, features and settings there. Um, really, really basic stuff. If we just have a look at About Phone, let's see what we've got in here. So the Android is 4.2.2. Um, and this is, the model number is in A17, which I think is made by... Sonim, if you can see that there, we've got Sonim written on here, so it's the Sonim A17 basically. Got some other bits and pieces here, but yeah, it is. It's an Android Android device. It does um, does run Android. Okay, so uh, as for settings, guys, it, it's it's really sort of basic. This thing does make and receive phone calls and text messaging, so you could use it as your main phone should you want to. You know, it does have Facebook. It, it will it will run YouTube. Um, you know, YouTube on these sorts of devices is a little bit laggy. The quality is obviously very lacking because of the resolution of the screen. But yeah, if you you know if you if you had to use this as your main device or you wanted to, it it would work. Um, you know, n no problems at all. So. Let's have a look at one thing that really does sort of niggle um, people with these devices with such a small screen. Let's see what it's like to type. So if we had a new item here. Yeah, it's, it is hard because the screen is so small. Um, you can type, you could use a stylus, you would find that easy, but the screen is tiny. Um, if we turn it on its side, it makes the keys a slightly bigger a little bit easier to use that's that's not too bad actually um, but yeah it's not ideal I would def definitely recommend a stylus for this thing yeah so that's typing so not not the best thing uh, for typing so if we have a look at Zello which is what we're all here for okay Right, so you can see we, we logged on to the Network Radio's channel zero there. Now, w one thing that I was trying to do there is find an option for volume control. So there doesn't appear to be anywhere on this device so that you can turn the volume down. So on some of the other network radios, like the RT3 here, you've got the knob on top for turning volume down. On the 7S Plus, you've got volume keys on the side there. So there isn't actually anywhere to turn the volume down, which is a bit strange. You know, there's, no, there's no buttons in here. Um, you know, in in Zello you can turn the volume down, but that's for individual users and, and things like that. So, yeah, that's that's a bit strange. That's that's really odd that you can't actually turn the volume down. Um, yeah, so that that's one downside. I mean, the volume wasn't deafening, but you know, you don't always want it on that loud. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was a bit bit odd. But as you can see, we've got Zello set up here. It does operate quite nicely. Um, if we go into some of the channels here, it's it's very, very, well, it's identical to any other network radio device, so we're not going to go into this in tons of detail. Um, I think what we will do is we'll try and get a bit of a ra radio check, a radio report, and see um, what the audio sounds like on send and receive. But, yeah, Zello is, is pretty straightforward. Again, guys, I've got a load of contact requests here. I'm sorry if I've not got back to you all. It's just uh, been really busy, and you have to like, accept all these individually, and it's a pain. So I will get around to accepting um, everybody. So just uh, watch this space on that. But yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll call somebody up and see what the um, send and receive audio is like on this device. M three H H Y. Yeah, bring in break station. Yeah, it's M three H H Y. The name's Lewis. Um, call sign on Zello is R M Coms. Just after a quick um, sort of audio report, I'm just trying out a new device. Just wanted to see what it's sounding like. Yeah, your audio is coming in crystal clear here, 
voice, there's no um, thing of noise in the background or anything like that, I can hear you perfect, if anyone else can hear you any different then please let us know. Absolutely fine here, Lewis. MM zero at WJ Mobile up in Glasgow. Absolutely fine, or. Yep, no worries, guys. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Seven three for now. We'll catch you further down. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, it works well. Um, it sounds sounds okay. Um, on on both ends. Like I say, it's just that really niggly detail that you can't turn the volume up and down. Um. Yeah, I'll have to have a look into that and get back to you if I find anything, guys. But it just seems really, really strange um, that you can't turn that volume up and down. But, yeah, it does work. It works on Zello. It works as an Android device. We've got the PTT that fully functions. And, of course, you can map all the buttons on this as well. And we've got the flashlight there, which is actually pretty bright. The camera's sort of dulling it down a bit, but it's, um, it's quite bright should you uh, need a flashlight. Okay, so that's the, the basic sort of um, assembly and, and setup and operation. Um, Zello, as I say, is fully functional. We'll do all the uh, things that you need it to, i.e. adding contacts, adding channels and things like that. Um, there's, I can't see any compromise in, in um, performance on Zello except for that volume up and down issue. And that's the um, same across the board. If you were you know using any app on here, there's, there's nowhere to actually turn the volume up and down, which is, is frustrating, really. Um, I'll definitely feed that back to the, the guys I bought this off. Okay guys, so not bad at all really. I, I think sort of as an overview, it does it does claim to have that UHF radio in and it, it doesn't have that, so that's an issue for us for a start. Um the possible reasons behind that is a lot of the sellers that, that sort of get hold of these and then sell them don't actually test them out and probably don't know a lot about the product. So when things are chi translated from Chinese to English and, and, and stuff and to bring it to the websites like eBay to you, a lot of it's lost in translation and little bits get added and embellished and before you know it, you've got, they're advertising a product that may necessarily not fit the bill. So the only thing that's disappointing with this is the UHF or VHF radio side of things. I think for a Zello network radio, I think it's pretty good and it's definitely one that I'll be keeping and, and, and probably using. Um, I think the uh, the audio quality on Zello is is more than passable. A little bit disappointing that there is no like knob or control to turn the volume up and down. That's a bit of a strange one and something I'm going to have to feed back um, to the uh, seller I bought this off. But it it feels okay. It's it, it looks the part. It's not a bad little device, and you know it's it's definitely one to add to the collection. So yeah, I'll leave that one there, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, if you if you want to buy this, just search like PTT um, mobile phone on eBay, and the um, the descriptions will come up. I don't want to put links in the bottom and, and get people to buy this because it's not um, like I say, it's not it, it doesn't match the description on on the shop, and I wouldn't want people to just sort of watch this, not take in any of what I've said, and then go and buy it and be disappointed. So I'm not going to share links on this one, guys. But there's plenty of them on eBay and Amazon and things like that. So yeah, let me know what you think. If you've got this device, you know, then let me know. Um, and any comments, suggestions, just leave them in the box below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And make sure you check out the social media links in the description for Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well. I'll put all sorts of bits and pieces on there, so make sure you follow me on those. And we'll leave that one there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next one. 7-3 for now. Cheers. Cheers.